Soldiers of Lordaeron, rise to meet your master's call. Did someone say Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker? Everyone except you. Aww. Gamers, do you like lots of buttons? This is the shit! Kill me now! Do you like being able to be the star of your own thriller video anywhere you go? Yeah! Yeah! Hey! Do you like being able to start your own pendant? <clears throat> Too far? Right to jail, right away. Well, about a billion years ago, and by that I mean on September 7th, around when the PCR first came out, Blizzard released a blue post talking about unholy death knights changes and uh, what they wanted to do with them. They wanted to nerf their single target, so they basically got, uh, you know, unholy assault now increases damage by 20%. Uh, sort of like Avenging Wrath without the crit, but uh, it used to grant 20% haste, and that was kind of like with the access they had to haste buffers, was absolutely making their single target completely asinine. Along with some other changes like some nerfs to the big summons like the Gargoyle and the Army of the Dead uh, Ghouls, the big cooldown Army of the Dead Ghouls, um, they also had a bunch of buffs. They had a bunch of buffs to their, you know, to their Death Coil, to their Scourge Strike, their Festering Strike, Festering Wound damage was increased. Uh, so a bunch of little, you know, buffs across the board, nice buffs. And then they had also the uh, Apocalypse Ghouls gaining their own set of scaling rather than scaling the same way that the Army of the Dead Ghouls uh, scaled because that way they could do it separate for the tier set and all that. But since then, it's pretty much been radio silence from the devs on uh, Unholy DK. They had some changes to Frost DK, but nothing else about Unholy, which leads me to believe that uh, Unholy might just be in a good state right now. It might just be in a pretty good state for Mythic Plus and for Raid still. And that's why they haven't really needed any new changes. Now, is it fun? Well, let's check it out. All right, now for this, since, you know, our tier set makes it so that Apocalypse summons an additional Magus of the Dead, your Magus of the Dead's Shadow Bolts now fire a volley of Shadow Bolts up to four nearby enemies. So it does AoE. In addition to that, uh, each rune you spend will increase its duration, how long it lasts by 0.5 seconds. And, of course, it will also cast Amplified Damage, increasing the damage that you deal by 5% for 10 seconds. So it's a nice little buff for your burst windows and such. You definitely want to use Apocalypse before you really start going into your burst rotation. Now... Um, do we want to use Army of the Dead to start this? I guess, I guess so, right? Just to, to do everything that we can. A lot of buttons with this. I wasn't kidding when I said at the start of the video, there's a lot of buttons. <laughs> Alright, so it'll look a little something like, uh, hit Army of the Dead, right? Then we pop Unholy Blight here. Then we put two Festering Strikes into this guy. Apocalypse. Do this. Transform our Ghoul. Do this. Good lord. Spread that. Start popping the... Festering wounds everywhere, virulent plague. I should have been spamming. Oh my god, ages ago. This is just a lot of stuff to do, bro. It's like you don't have enough time to do everything within the. Maybe you should like use the file a little bit later on because, good lord, man. Refresh the diseases before they go bad. Put the defile down. Pop this, get the Magus of the Dead up, so we get like a mini burst window here. I mean, the, the amount of stuff you can actually do is only limited, I think, by your haste and your runic corruption procs uh, to get more runes back faster, faster rune regeneration rates, essentially. But I think this actually looks pretty good so far, I'm not gonna lie. I mean,. The fact that I've been holding this much damage uh, this long with this just feels feels like it's going to be pretty good, to be honest. Holding off on using Defile here because I want it for uh, the Unholy Assault and uh, Vile Contagion window. And uh, should we wait on Abomination? No, we can just pop it during, right? Alright, let's pop it here. Let's do that. Oh, actually, we can just uh, do that now because... Right, and then save it to put more festering wounds on the target once we run low. Boom. And that's going to increase our damage done. Very nice. Alright. And now we can hit the Abomination Limb. So, no matter how you slice it, I mean, it's, it's looking like it's going to be pretty uh, strong. Like, with better gear, more efficient stat weights and stuff, like, it's just, it's just looking like it's going to be pretty nice. Your, your cooldowns don't all sync up, per se, so you will probably end up waiting on some stuff. 
but uh, I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing in the world. Reapply those diseases. You got to make sure that you're reapplying those diseases at all times. It's just super important. And it's a lot. I mean, it popped the army of the dead again. Uh, yep. Yeah. Do this. Do this. Put six wounds on everything. Defile. And then just start to burn. Just pop those uh, festering wounds, man. And get those procs of your talent just exploding. Like, it, the damage can be pretty explosive, honestly, with actual buffs and such. So we're going to kind of end it there because it's been almost four minutes now. Diseases are going to tick down. I was holding around, what, like 230k-ish for a while there. And uh, obviously the diseases ticking down are going to reduce this. So it's going to drop for a bit until everything kind of falls off. And I'm away from the targets. And yeah, pretty much there you go. So, I mean, you know, not bad. Honestly, not bad. Um, obviously with Unholy Death Knight, you're talking about like the more targets you have, the better the damage is going to be because we're not, we're not like soft capped at five targets like a lot of other classes we're not a, this is unholy decay is not a quintet cleave class right it's it's uh seven plus targets like uh, eight targets let's say is, is the ideal eight or more targets um is going to maximize our damage potential um i'm not 100 percent on this build but i think that this build is a pretty decent build it's a pretty good build for m plus um obviously the raid build would look different you wouldn't use all the stuff like the vile contagion and all that because there'd be no need to unless it's a big aoe fight where the aoe actually matters like stuff has to die really quickly so you need that aoe burst in the raid but other than that if it's single target like you obviously don't use this there is a single target on holy dk build um Maybe when the uh, patch rolls around and we've actually got everything, you know, official, officially set, I'll do like, you know, my own kind of um, unholy DK single target build and uh, mythic plus build. I'll, I'll probably just roll those into the same video. But essentially, the only thing I think I, you might just maybe scrap icy talents because I don't. I, I mean, like icy talents is good. Don't get me wrong, right? But like. I don't think it's that good. Maybe you take Soul Reaper and M+. Plus. Um, you know, there was really no point in using Soul Reaper there, though, because it, it, we're not going to get, like, an accurate reading on it because Soul Reaper, in addition to being just another button, which is, oh, my God, uh, <laughs> right? Soul Reaper, um, with the target dummies, you saw, like, other people were hitting the dummies, so they're going to be, like, forever at low, low HP. Or if there's nobody hitting the target dummies when you're there, then this is never really going to get, um, you know, like maximum efficiency. You're not going to get maximum efficiency out of it. Um, and then with like people hitting the target dummies and keeping it low all the time, you're going to get like a little too much efficiency out of it, right? Like it's not going to be that accurate. It's going to skew it one way or the other. So, but uh, yeah, I think you probably take this in M plus just because you can use this and uh, gain more runic corruption, which is great because you get your runes back quicker and uh, you definitely want that you know that additional burst damage like execute phase kind of burst damage um you can just start using this every six seconds once the ads that you're on get low you know you just just keep using it and i mean it'll you know definitely on like priority ads it's pretty good so yeah i mean i mean it, it would look i i would imagine that like the meta build that everybody would be using would look something similar to this in m plus all right so let's check out the damage breakdown here right uh, we got, of course, Epidemic being the top because it's Epidemic, and in AoE, it's going to be the top all the time because it is. Uh, <laughs> Bursting Source, uh, this talent, um, yeah, like really strong for AoE. So definitely, I mean, it's pretty good damage, honestly. They're like really good damage. Scourge Strike, um, hitting all the targets in your Defile. Um, even though I wasn't like that efficiently using the Defile, Scourge Strike is still pretty damn uh, strong like it being our third highest damage our damage breakdown is, is pretty balanced and compared to a lot of other classes though i'd say but definitely feeling those buffs to scourge strike and like those secondary hits doing almost as much um well not and not that close but like two-thirds of well yeah i guess two-thirds of what the uh the actual main ability was it's, i mean it's pretty good it's pretty damn good not gonna lie and uh, then we have virulent plague of course being up there festering wound damage so the festering wound damage is what i'm not really it's like i know it got buffed but i feel almost like like the damage that it got buffed with is is maybe not that great is not that you know it's kind of negligible but i don't think it really matters that much considering that uh you know like bursting sores is is mostly going to be where our damage is coming from in aoe anyway i guess the festering wound damage would matter more on single target um like the individual festering wound damage would matter a little bit more on single target i think maybe if it was like stronger than this it would be too powerful in aoe 
um, because you're just popping all those festering wounds, and then so you're getting the bursting source procs right from the talent, and then you're getting the damage on each individual thing from all the festering wounds that you're popping, you know, all the time with defi um, using your scourge strike on stuff in defile, and uh, the defile giving you stacking mastery bonus. I mean, I, I maybe if this were stronger, it would be a little bit too strong. I don't know. Maybe it could stand to be a little bit more powerful. Armagus of the Dead, uh, doing like I want to say. 30% more damage than our uh, regular Army of the Dead ghouls. And these are the Army of the Dead ghouls actually from um, Apocalypse, actually. Uh, and th the explosions, of course, from Ruptured Viscera. Uh, Army of the Dead, these ghouls, though, th this was the actual main ability. You can kind of see the, it's, well, you can barely see the icon there. But yeah, um, it looks like they did actually less damage overall like significantly less damage so i guess it's just not that strong like they they really nerfed the crap out of this huh yeah okay well i mean festering strike also not dealing a significant amount of damage i guess but maybe um it's like maybe i was just not that efficient with it either because you know you should generally be spreading your festering strike around if you can to put those um those wounds on everything and then you know start popping them in your defile even outside of your burst phases so that's the thing to consider. Um, but probably in single target will be higher up on your damage meter because you'll need to be using it more often because you're not just going to be using the Unholy Assault into the Vile Contagion to spread all the, the stuff around, you know, every uh, one and a half minutes. But yeah, anyway, I mean, for five targets um, for Unholy DK, that's actually just just not bad, man. Just not bad. I, I, I kind of like it. And I can see why the, the devs, I guess, haven't touched it because it's, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like the most fun. Like I've, I've played more fun stuff like, you know, Elemental Shaman uh, seems very, very fun and engaging uh, this patch. Fury Warrior, unfortunately, after the nurse does not seem to be as much fun. We're going to be um, needing to take, I think, separate uh, talents. They actually nerfed, as I'm recording this video, they actually nerfed the, um, not the, the bloodbath directly per se but the reckless abandon that gives you the bloodbath they nerf that to where it will only give you one every time you use rampage rather than two so they like further nerfed it because they don't want people leaning too much into um bloodthirst bloodbath or you know or um uh, raging blow slash crushing blow but the thing is that i mean people are just going to naturally do that anyway they're just going to be using the bloodthirst slash bloodbath if they use uh even use Reckless Abandon, which I don't think will be the case anymore. Anyway, I don't want to talk too much about that. This is an Unholy DK video, not a, not a Warrior video. Um, maybe I'll talk about that in a later video. But yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, um, tier set, definitely strong, consistent. It just feels, it just feels solid, right? Um, doesn't really feel like it necessarily needs any buffs at this point. I definitely don't see it needing, needing any nerfs. I think this is probably going to fall somewhere in most tier lists around like A tier, um you know at at the very lowest i could see b tier i think it's just going to be a, a very like uh solid class with this t or solid spec with this tier set and i mean like fun fun is i guess relative right some people think that all the buttons and the more engaging like oh i gotta maintain this and maintain that is is more fun and more exciting to them so i guess if that's your thing like definitely this will be a lot of fun for you because there are a lot of buttons <laughs> so thematic seal of approval definitely like it i will be playing my dk uh as unholy this i'll probably be playing frost as well but yeah definitely playing my dk um primarily i say as unholy uh this coming patch i have always liked unholy it's it's actually significantly different from the classes type of classes and specs that i normally play so looking forward to that friends if you have made it all the way to the end of this video thank you for joining me once again and if you enjoy my content please do be sure to leave me a like comment share subscribe all that good stuff and there's nothing else to be said, I guess. So I will see you in the next one.